In Premiere Pro there are a bunch of inbuilt transitions and tons of flexibility for creating elaborate modern transitions. Well sometimes the old ways can be the best so today we're going to look at how to create some Star Wars inspired vintage wipe transitions. Hi guys and welcome back to Editor's Life and today we're going to be looking at creating five different wipe transitions. They're all pretty simple and quick to do but they all offer something a little bit different and can be used for a wide range of projects. First up we're going to do a linear wipe from left to right and to do this we're going to select our starting clip so I'm just going to take the first few seconds of this and drag this onto video layer 2. We don't need the audio so I'm just going to delete that. And then we're going to take our second clip which is this desert one. I'm going to take the last few seconds of this and then drag this onto video layer 1. And then what we want to do is come up to our effects. Mine's up here so I'm just going to search linear wipe drag this on to your first clip which is on video layer 2 and if we come into the effects controls and mess with the transition completion you'll see how this effect looks but in Star Wars you tend to see that these these wipes have got a feathered edge so if we turn this feather up to about 300% you'll see how this effect looks now and to animate we're going to do this over about a one second period so I'm going to select the starting point about here click on this little stopwatch and turn it to 0% Come forward about a second and then make it a hundred and you'll see how this transition looks. You can make it longer or shorter by playing with these effects so just bring these keyframes further apart if you want it to be a bit longer. You can also mess with the ease on these keyframes so you could right click and create a bezier curve but most of the time in Star Wars they tend to be quite linear these wipes, quite old school. For the second transition it's just a case of tweaking what we've already done so I'm just going to copy paste these two clips a bit further in the timeline and on the linear wipe you'll notice that the wipe angle is 90% if we turn this to zero you'll see it goes from top to bottom or bottom to top but in Star Wars it's quite common to have a wipe that goes from one top corner to the bottom corner so if you mess with this you'll see how the effect changes and we probably want it to be about 135% and we'll have a look at how this looks the third transition is a radial wipe, so I'm just going to collect these two clips again and paste them further along in the timeline. We can delete the linear wipe off this and then search radial wipe and just drag this onto video layer 2. This effect is animated in a very similar way, so again we're going to turn the feather amount to 300% and you'll notice with the transition completion with this that it goes in kind of a clock formation. For this transition you probably want it to be a little bit longer because it's got further to go so start the transition at 0% and you want to go forward about 2 seconds with this and then make it 100. We'll just preview this really quickly. You might notice when you render on your timeline that as the transition starts the original clip on the top layer goes transparent even though the clock animation works perfectly. This is a weird glitch and the way to get rid of this is to simply duplicate this layer a couple of times. So if you want to hold ALT or OPTION on your keyboard and then just drag this up a couple of times, you'll notice that now it works perfectly. For the fourth transition we're going to open up from a circle in the middle and to do this normally you'd add something called an iris round wipe. So I'll just search this here and I'll show you how that looks. You put your clips side by side and then with this in between you'll notice that we'll open up from the middle but in the effects parameters you've got no option to feather the edges so it's not very Star Warsy. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to copy these two layers again, remove any effects that we've got on the top one and on this top layer you want to create an opacity mask so just hit the circle and then hold in shift just click on any of these points to make it perfectly round and finally invert this mask. And I'm just going to add some rulers here to help me scale this perfectly so command R or control R if you're on Windows and you want to find the center point in my case it'd be 960 by 540 because I'm working in a 1080p comp. So 540 and then 960. So for this I'm just going to go back a couple of seconds and then start the stopwatch on the mask path. I'm then going to go forward a couple of seconds, probably about three, and then hit this little icon for another keyframe. Using this little arrow here next to the keyframe you can go back to your first one and then want to select the path and then start scaling this down so holding shift on these points you want to come towards the middle you can zoom in if you need to and then just try and make it as small as you can get it until it disappears then 
go back to your second keyframe. And for this, we're gonna scale all the way up. So select your mask path again, and then start scaling this up. For this, we're gonna change the feather amount to 600%. So feather at 600. And what you want to make sure is that because you've now added this feather, that these dotted lines around the edge, you want to make sure that they're also going beyond the frame. So if you need to scale up a bit more, you can do that now. Remember to hold shift. And then we'll preview it. You could try doing this animation with the mask expansion, but I've noticed I get a few glitches when I do that and the feather amount tends to change quite a bit depending on how much you expand the mask. So it just seems easier to just use the mask path. If you are having the similar problem to the last transition where you get a bit of a transparent video layer due to the feather amount, Again, you can just Option or Alt on your keyboard and create a few duplicates, and that should solve your problem. Last but not least is the classic reverse circle transition. So if you just wanna take these first two layers again, copy paste, and this one's really quick and simple. It's just a case of switching these keyframes around. So pull one to the left, pull one to the right. Again, duplicate if needed, but on these, make sure that you do the opposite and you uninvert your mask. So on all three layers, just select the inverted option, and then we'll see how that looks. And that's all there is to it. Hopefully you found some of these transition effects helpful and you can use them in your projects. I've got a bunch of different tutorials and resources coming in the next few weeks, so feel free to subscribe to the channel if that's something that interests you. And if not, leaving a like on the video is always helpful. Cheers.